morning, everybody. I, I'm so glad you got here. I prayed at 5 o'clock this morning. I was driving this direction. I went, Lord, protect everybody on the roads. It was snowing then. I don't know. Is it still snowing? It doesn't look like it is. Beautiful out there. Let's stand together. Welcome those who are online. And uh, we're just asking God to bless you as much as we're asking God to bless us here. <clears throat> I want to read from Psalm 84 for just a moment and, and uh, step into worshiping our king. Psalm 84 says, how blessed are those who dwell in your house. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And his house is wherever you are, by the way. If you're online, that's his house. How blessed is the man whose strength is in you. And then I like this one. O God of the armies, host of the armies, how blessed is the one who puts their trust in you. So let's just do that. Can we do that right now? Like, Line up our hearts, say our trust is in the Lord. Father, we thank you that we can line up our emotions, our spirit, and our, and our will, and our intellect. We line it up and say, God, our trust is in you. We're here because we fear you, Lord. We trust you. You've won our affections with the cross. We want to follow you. We want to worship you. And uh, that's what we're going to do right now, Lord. We're going to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And uh, you appreciate those who honor you. So, Father, thank you that you're going to bless every person in this room today. That by the end of today, they will have said, I met with the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Tanner, let's worship the Lord. All right. If we have any youth uh, from sixth grade to high school, they're meeting over in Building C. They have donuts and worship and stuff over there for you. You just want a donut? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. Nope. We're not invited. Yeah. We're just going to start singing an oldie but a goodie. Um, like Dad said, center our hearts on Jesus. And um, man, I just feel like God wants to give us fresh hope, fresh joy of our salvation. We Jesus is worth celebrating today as much as he was a week ago, as much as he was a week before that. Amen. I'm going to say again, Jesus is worth celebrating as much as he was a week ago. Week before that, a thousand years ago, he's worthy of celebrating. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. I invite you. I just invite you, friend. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your friendship. Thank you that you are our helper, that you reveal Jesus to us. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would... Um, that you'd give us, draw all of our hearts closer, any place we're not close, or we think we're not close, draw our hearts close to Jesus this morning. And we invite your joy. We invite your peace. Yeah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forte of glory divine ever of salvation purchased of God born of his spirit washed in his blood oh this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long and this is my story this is my song I'm praising my savior all the day long let's sing verse three perfect submission and perfect submission all is at rest I in my Savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above filled with this goodness and washing his love oh this is my story time 
every voice. This is, oh, this is my story. Oh, this is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day. Praising my Savior all the day long. And this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life that I will be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me.
all that you've done, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Let's sing worthy one more time. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Let's fill this place. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb of the Slay. Yes, Lord. We join with an eternal song. We join with the angels this morning in this small church in Alaska. We want to give you glory, Jesus. We say you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. One more time, worthy.
We're singing, oh, oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Oh, Christ be magnified in me. We're singing, oh, oh, Christ be magnified. On the altar of my life. Oh, Christ be magnified in me. Sing it. We're singing, oh, oh, Christ be I'll stand strong and worship you. If it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice, you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings. I hold fast to what is true. If the cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you. Cause death is just a doorway into resurrection life. If I join you in your suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing. My song will be the same. Singing all Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Sing again. Will Christ be
Shedding your own blood Oh, nothing can undo The thing that you have done The battle you have won By shedding your own blood Nothing can, nothing can undo This thing you've done This thing that you have done Oh, the battle you have won By shedding your own blood Jesus, one more time Yes, God. Oh, God is awesome, powerful. Say, nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing is impossible. We're going to just uh, celebrate his victory on the cross by taking communion. So we have three tables for sacraments. We'd like all of you to go ahead and come get a sacrament and come back to your uh, chair, and then we'll celebrate together. So let's go ahead and do that.
Never leaves the one behind. Say, I am the one. I am the one. You know, Lord, in the communion of sacraments and remembering of what he did on the cross is a provision for renewal for the church. It's a provision for revival or restore that first love you have. It's a provision for forgiveness. If you've been around me very long, when we get a fresh blanket of snow, I always love to quote Isaiah where he says, come let us reason together. Though my sins were as scarlet, they will be white as white as snow. He's made provision for every day to be a new day. Isn't that cool? Gives second chances, third chances, the power to walk in the resurrection life. So let's just remember together. Let's take the body which was broken on our behalf he was broken so that we could be made whole. Let's remember together. It's crazy to think that the shed blood of Jesus defeated the powers of darkness 2,000 years ago, and still he's rendering the powers of darkness is defeated because of the shed blood. So let's just come in agreement that the shed blood of Jesus is victorious over my life, over this nation, and over this planet. Can we come into agreement with that? And let's celebrate his goodness in the blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I did this, I did this last hour. I want to do it again this hour. Uh, we were in Kona, Hawaii with my wife and I. We met this couple there. They go to a different church, really sweet couple. And we were talking about how COVID had affected their church. And they've, they've not met very much since COVID happened. And 
they were just kind of lamenting, but they were talking about COVID-19, you know, and trying to be careful. And, and I said, um, have many in your church got COVID-19? And, uh, and they said, no, not many. How about your church? I said, yeah, I think about 40%. How many have had COVID in here? Raise your hand. About, about 35%. Last hour was a little bit more than that. How many are healed? Come on, that's the testimony of Jesus right there. The Lord is healing, and I just come to agreement right now. Why don't you stand back up? We're going to pray. My niece was just declared cancer-free this week. And, uh, yeah, come on. Come on. And I know there's people around you that are contending for healing over somebody or a breakthrough. Find somebody and pray together over whatever that might be. Can you do that right now? Carry one another's burdens, all right? Declare victory over each other. Take some, a moment. to watch the announcements it's on recorded so lean into the announcements here real quick 
Okay, next month is the Daddy-Daughter Dance, February 13th at 6 o'clock at the Equipping Center. Spots are limited, so make sure to sign up soon. They're going to fill up fast. of a couple of things that are coming up on the schedule. We have another 24-7 week of prayer coming up starting the second week of February, February 8th. Be watching for sign-ups to come out so that you can sign up for a slot for the 24-7 week of prayer. And then just a reminder that our equipping class, the identity class, starts 6 p.m. service on February 21st. Shipping and just hearing the word. It's just a great time to get away and seek the Lord and have lots of fun. So if you haven't signed up, make sure you do it as soon as possible because slots are limited. Um, so you want to get there as soon as possible. Uh, more details to come. Also, if you guys would like to sponsor a youth, um, we have youth that would like to go that don't have the don't have the finances. So please um, go ahead and support them. And let's send our youth to camp this year. Love you guys. <laughs> well, with an unfortunate turn of events, we are afraid to announce. We lose. We give up. I'm a sore loser. Laura, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Laura wins. If if you haven't been around, uh, Gabe and his team has been tormenting the staff with frightening them and all kinds of different. And you, they got me twice, really good. <laughs> But they never could get Laura. Way to go, Laura. So, so good. Um, one real quick thing. We, uh, things are happening. Really cool. Father-daughter dance. Please join. Please do that in February for Valentine's Day. Always a special night here. We do it right here. And uh, really, really cool time. So if you have a dad with a daughter, come join us. It's really fun. Also... For ownership, we're needing more help for children ministry. And uh, if you have a heart to uh, help out, we really appreciate that. Uh, we are willing to uh, pay 14-year-old, some teenagers to help us here and there too. So if you have somebody that falls in that category, a teenager that can help, we're willing to help uh, pay for that when needed. So anyway, important thing. Um, <clears throat> Last time I was with you was three Sundays ago. Brynn and I, you guys celebrated our anniversary with us. You remember that? And we shared our marriage story with you all. And uh, I want to just, we, then I told you we're going to Hawaii for, for a couple of weeks, which is an amazing vacation for us. Anyway, I want to just give you a glimpse. I made a little video for my kids that I'm going to share with you. Now, no jealousy. <laughs> I'm just sharing a little bit of the glory with you. sitting here, 
by the ocean, relaxing. I each ate a lot of fried food tonight. Tummy still Feels bloated. <laughs> Feel gross. <laughs> Say hi. Hi guys. I kind of have it on Zoom. That's why her face looks so big. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought you might enjoy some ocean waves. Love y'all. Doesn't that sound amazing? Ooh. It was just powerful in those waves. I just I want to show you that because I want to show you scriptures that I'm praying over all of you right now. And it's found in Psalm 42, and this is what the scripture says. It says, deep calls to deep at the sound of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have rolled over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and his song will be with me in the night. Say, I'll take that for myself. The Lord commands his loving kindness toward you in the daytime, and he sings over you in the night. This is found in Psalm 42, and the, you guys are familiar with how it starts because David is talking about his longing, his soul longing to meet with God. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. David knew and discovered in life there was nothing on earth that satisfied the way God, presence, satisfied. And all of us are longing for satisfaction. We're longing for joy. We're longing for fulfillment. And it's really found not in people. And it's really not found, not an experience. It's, it's really found in the Lord and his love. And so I'm praying that even today and this time we're together in the word, that the Lord would encounter you like a wave of love. And so, Father, I thank you for every person in this room. And you know their hearts. You know their challenges. You know they're, they're, they're weak. I thank you, Lord, that you're acquainted with all their ways. You know how many hairs are on their head. There's not a mystery about them. You're totally acquainted with what's going on in their lives. Father, meet them today, I pray, in Jesus' name. January 6th, I mentioned before we left, which, which was January 3rd is when I met with you guys. Um, I said January 6th is my birthday, and I'm praying for good things to happen on my birthday. It was actually the, the day that the electoral count would be voted on, and uh, and I was contending for some breakthroughs. And what happened? <laughs> Capital riots on my birthday. So it wasn't necessarily what I was praying for, to be honest with you. Um, and, you know, it just has kind of reiterated something that I want to make sure that you all are partnering with what God is doing in this hour. Because he's doing something. We just sang this song. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. And so we've gone through this season, and I've talked about it before, a season of shaking, a season of being sifted, and a season of testing. And it started really, it started at the beginning of well, March last year when COVID hit. Then we had the ugly head of racism come up and show forth his ugliness. And then we had riots, right? And then we had this election stuff going on. We've had the controversy over masks. It's been a shaking. Anybody agree? Yeah. And, and the Lord has a purpose. It's not that he caused all that, but he's using it. He's intentional. He doesn't want this thing to go by without him accomplishing what he wants to accomplish in my life and in your life. It's important right now that we understand his agenda. That's what I want to talk about. First part of this message is going to be prophetic in nature, okay? It means I'm going to help foretell what God is doing, help you identify it, partner with him in this. So I'm going to turn back to Hebrews 12, a scripture that we've looked at in the past here, 26 and 27. It says, and his voice shook the earth then, that's Haggai, he actually quotes Haggai, but Hebrews, he's saying he's going to do it again. He has promised, saying, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Here's one thing I want us to recognize, is right now there is a battle going over on, over the destiny of your life and the destiny of nations. There's an angelic realm and a demonic realm in the heavenlies right now, and they're warring over America, they're warring over the nations of the planet, and they're warring over the church. 
right now. And what we do on earth affects what happens in that realm, and what happens in that realm affects how we experience life in this earth. And the more we understand that we are called to actually impact that realm by what we believe, what we agree with, and what we say, the more we're going to see God's purposes fulfilled on the earth. And so this is a big deal to understand. This shaking is to line up both in the demonic and angelic realm with heaven and the earthly realm with heaven. He says, he once more denotes, the, this is his agenda, the removing of those things which can be shaken. As of created things, so that those things which cannot be shaken may, may remain. Verse 28 says, therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we offer to God our lives in acceptable service with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. We're in a season where the Lord is shaking the earth, and he's really hoping that God's people get everything that's rooted, not in the kingdom, in Christ, out of us. Wherever we have put our hope in our wealth or our health or our president, anything in the natural that we have trusted in for our well-being, he says, let's not do that. Let's line up your hearts, your well-being with heaven. Let's, let's get your, uh, let's refine your affections. Let's refine your attention. Let's get anchored in the kingdom that cannot be shaken, the unseen realm of God's presence. This is what he's doing in this hour. Do you want to be encouraged today? Yes. All right. All right. I, I'm here to encourage you. I, I have several prophetic things to share with you. One of them, I was yet in time of prayer yesterday, and the Lord says, remember Peter. And he, I said, yeah, do you remember he got sifted? I said, oh, yeah. He said, go look at it. So I went back and looked at Peter. And remember, Jesus says to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked permission to sift you. But look at this part. But I have prayed for you, and your faith will not fail. And when you return, strengthen your brothers. Here's what's going on right now. The Lord is strengthening you as you allow the shaking to realign your, your position in your heart, your mind, and your direction with heaven and God's purpose. We sang this song, Christ be magnified in me, right? Did you feel that in the room? Christ be magnified in me. When you get that lined up, he says, now I'm going to use you powerfully. Uh, this morning I woke up at uh, 444. Some of you know the significance of that number, but our church, Northgate, is named from Ezekiel 44.4. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but Ezekiel 44, 4 says this. The prophet says, I came by the way of the north gate, and he, the Lord took me into the front room, and the glory of the Lord filled the house, and I fell on my face. Here's what God's preparing the church for, the glory. He's preparing the church for the glory of the Lord. He's wanting to pour out his spirit. Joel 2, Malachi 4 are prophetic words that before the great and terrible of the day of the Lord, I'm going to pour out my spirit. There is an end time harvest coming. Yep. But he's positioning you and I hearts so we're aligned so we can handle his glory. Because if his glory comes and we're not prepared, it'll destroy our lives. He's preparing us. He wants to make sure where our focus is on him. He's causing us to establish our allegiance completely on him, not politics, not government, not the president. He cares about those things, but that's not where our trust needs to be lined up. Somebody say amen. amen. Something is coming. The Lord is working. There's something good coming. I want you to know the Lord is loosing hope into your hearts right now. Definition of hope, biblical hope is a joyful anticipation that good is coming. The God of hope wants to fill you with joy and peace in believing. This is, ex, this is in the scriptures. That you may be bound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I was reminded of Lazarus, the story of Lazarus. You remember Jesus, Bethany is that direction, and Jesus is over here in this town, and he's ministering, and the word comes. Hey, Jesus, one of your best friends is sick. And, you know, you know how I, what you and I had done. We immediately, like, called everybody. We say, pray for him. We got the prayer chain going, right? We say, or we turn right away. We're going to pray for him. 
But this is what he said. He said to his disciples, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of the Lord. And if you believe the glory of the Lord, you will see it and discover it. And then when he raised Lazarus from the dead, what happened? He said, didn't I not tell you? This is what you are going to see, church, in America and in this planet. You're going to see the glory of the Lord. Do not lose heart. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, do not lose heart. God is up to something very big. And our assignment, church, has not changed. We personally signed up for 2 Chronicles 7.14. As a church family, we said, we're signing up for this. If my people who are called by my name, that's you guys, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. Somebody say, turn from your wicked ways. I will hear, I will heal, and I will, I will forgive, and I will heal their land. He still has a heart to heal America. He still has a heart to heal the nations, but it's up to us to step into the assignment. And so as a, as a brother of yours in Christ, as your pastor, I am still like in that same place, like, Lord, I'm coming to agreement. You're going to heal this land. You're going to heal America. Amen. Yesterday in my prayer time, I, the Lord reminded me of Zechariah again. He said, Dennis, it's not going to be by might. Might is natural. It's not going to be by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The Lord is going to do something. He's going to do something big. Um, he reminded me of, of um, Numbers chapter 14, verse 13, when Moses is bringing the Israelites out of Egypt, and they've just looted. They're taking the wealth out of Egypt, and they stand right at the Red Sea. You guys remember this. And the Egyptians are coming after him. They're between a rock and a hard place. We're between a rock and a hard place. We are. But God is ready to. This is what Moses said. He said, do not fear. Somebody say, do not fear. Fear is not our friend. Do not fear. He says, stand firm and watch the salvation of the Lord. I'm, I'm telling you, that's what we're going to see. But you can't. Let the enemy steal confidence from you. I want to I pray for us before we step into what does it mean to anchor ourselves in the kingdom. Father, I want to thank you for every person in this room. And Lord, I especially pray that you would root out any unbelief in this room about your goodness, that your purposes are good. You have plans, not calamity, ahead of us for good. You have plans for good, not calamity. Root out unbelief and doubt in your nature and your character over us personally, over our nation, and over this earth. And Lord, I come into agreement that you would make us tender, Lord, that, that the soil of our hearts would be pliable, that you could, see, plant, you could plant seeds of truth deep, that they would be rooted in our hearts, that we could become that end-time church that you have planned, one that is unreproachable holy and without blame. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, the kingdom. Simple verse, but a profound verse. How does the kingdom show up? If the kingdom that cannot be shaken is the one we want to anchor in, what does that kingdom look like? How is it to show up in our lives? How many want to anchor in the kingdom of God? Amen. I do too. And Romans 14, 17 is a simple description. You guys are familiar with the scripture, but I, I want to dig in there a little bit. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So when Paul is talking about the kingdom, who is the broker of the kingdom? Say it out loud. It's in that verse. It's not a mystery. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the broker of the kingdom. So the Holy Spirit is what you and I are longing to have encounter us, fill us, overflow us, shift us, change us. We need the Spirit of God to affect us. So righteousness, peace, and joy is found in the Holy Spirit. Chapter 12, 28 of Hebrews says, you don't strive to enter in. He says, you receive it. You receive the kingdom. It's something you believe for, and then you receive it. 
You don't have to labor for it. You receive the Holy Spirit, receive the King of Kings into your lives. Wherever the kingdom of God is, it means Jesus has rightful place of reigning there. All right? And so righteousness, let's talk about righteousness, um, the first characteristic of the kingdom. Righteousness is a gift to be received through faith. There's a right standing with God. How many know that when you invited Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came and washed you, regenerated you, and he what? He made you what? Righteous. It's a position before God. We know we quote 2 Corinthians 5.21 a lot. He made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, that we might become what? The righteousness of God in him. So there was a transaction that was made. When you trusted in Christ, he took your sin, you took his righteousness. Hallelujah. So there's a right standing before God. It's a gift. John uh, Romans 5 describes it this way. Death once held us in his grip, and by the blunder of one man, which was Adam, death reigned as king over humanity. But now, how much more are we held in the grip of grace and continue reigning as kings? That's powerful truth. In life, God is creating us to reign with him, enjoying our regal uh, freedom through the gift, the gift of perfect righteousness in the one and only Jesus, the Messiah. So righteousness is a gift to re- be received as salvation, but it also is a, a way of walking. It's a way of learning how to walk out righteousness. We don't walk out righteousness to get righteous. Because we are righteous, we learn how to walk in the ways of Jesus. Does that make sense? Somebody say yes, that makes sense. I have a, just a, a picture up here that I like showing it. There you go. Jesus is walking. So we've been talking about making disciples. Disciples aren't made when you're born again. But the assignment of the church is to make disciples. He didn't say make converts. He didn't say make converts. He said make disciples. So how do you make a disciple? Well, you get around some people and you start following Jesus until they like your life enough, they start following you. And then you turn around and go, follow me as I follow Jesus. And you learn and you grow in walking in the ways of Jesus. It's not perfection. It's growing in righteousness. In fact, the Lord is looking for the church to walk out his righteousness. It says in Proverbs that a man, a righteous man falls, but he gets back up. Anybody ever fallen in this room? I have too, many times over. But he gets back up and he says, okay, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm stepping back in this. I'm following you. And there's some things the Lord is looking in this hour um, that I think is really important just to grab a hold of. Because the church, um, he's wanting to purify the church. He's wanting to refine the church. And we're in a season, I'm just going to be transparent, we're in a season where the shaking, part of it is learning how to honor people. Honor people that we don't like. Honor people that we don't agree with. Peter said in 1 Peter, he says, honor all people. What does honor mean? Definition of honor. Celebrate someone without stumbling over who they're not. You ever known anybody that you stumbled over for who they weren't? I won't mention any right now. Actually, I have a picture. I won't. You know that picture of Bernie Sanders on Inauguration Day that's going viral? We have a picture of him sitting in here this morning. It's on there. I don't know if you can find it or not, but anyway... All right, how, how do you honor somebody, anybody here probably, so there's probably a few people that don't agree with Bernie Sanders' ideology, but if, how do you talk about him? How do you talk about our past president? How do you talk about our current administration? How do, how do you, we're in a culture that slanders people in authority. We, we have a media that has been slandering President Trump, John Donald Trump, been slandering him for four years. I mean, unashamedly, accusing, twisting the story over who this man is. Does he add some fuel to it? Oh, yeah, he does. He's got some. Yeah, he's got some. <laughs> but... If you, if you believe anything that media, liberal media is telling you, you have, you have taken on some stuff. 
Because that, that media has an agenda. And it's not about making this nation healthy. I'm telling you right now. And, and the church has to learn how not to step into the accusation of the enemy. The enemy's name is the accuser. His weapon is accusation. His goal is to divide. Somebody turn to your neighbor. That's his goal. And, it, and it's happening in the nation. It's happening in family life. It's happening in the church. Transparently. You know, in the church. We have people in the church. And I'm not talking about, I'm, not ta- I'm talking church big C. We have people in the church who are never Trumpers. And people who have supported Trump, who are in the church, when they say they're never Trumpers, they end up feeling accused because we say, or some of us say, they're deceived. Because they bought the lie of the media. And so how do they feel? They feel slandered by the church. The church feels slandered by the church. And then you have people on this side of the aisle who have supported Trump because of his ideology. And, and what have we ex- experienced? White supremacists, racists, bigots, fascists. And so the, the nation needs to be healed, but the, heal, the nation won't get healed unless the church gets healed. And, and what the Lord is doing, it's not so much about what's happening on the presidential realm, it's what's happening in the church. Because we're his people, and if my people, are you hearing me? We can't partner with the accuser, even over people we disagree with. And we have a few. We have a few. So righteousness is walking in the ways of Jesus. And Jesus did not accuse, except sometimes he had to talk to religious people to correct their ways, which happens to be us. So righteousness, we need to walk in the ways of Jesus. Second, peace. How many want the peace of God in this hour? A definition of peace, biblical peace, is not the absence of conflict, but it's the presence of the person who is the Prince of Peace. I don't know, the other day, man, I had lost my peace. And uh, I won't even talk about the situation, but I was not peaceful. And, um, and I knew it. You, you, pretty soon when you learn you, somewhere, my peace went away. I don't have peace. Something's going on inside here that's not good. And, and you know what you do in that moment? You say, okay, God, I need the Prince of Peace. I need your presence right now. I, I need the presence of the King of Kings. He loves to come when we stop and say, stuff's going on in here that's really messing with my emotions and my mind, and I'm not treating somebody correctly. Lord, I need your shalom. I need your peace. Or, or maybe you have fear. This is a big one that's going on right now. The church is looking about around tomorrow. They're looking at the current administration. They're looking at the decisions that are being made. And we're going, oh, my goodness. What's tomorrow going to look like? What's next year going to look like? I don't know if anybody else in this room is experiencing that. Listen, don't partner with fear. Do not partner with anxiety. Let the peace, of the Prince of Peace come and minister to you that place in your heart. Very, very important. I was reminded uh, of a couple of different situations. One is Corey Tim Boom. Everybody know who Corey Tim Boom is? One of my heroes in life when I read her story. Um, just to remind you, she's from Holland, lived in Holland, and uh, her and her family ask you, ask, actually rescued or protected Jews uh, when the Nazi regime was committing genocide against Jews. And they were Christians, they were Reformed Christians, and they were rescuing and protecting and hiding Jews in their house, her father and her sister, Bestie, and uh, I think a couple of her uncles, and, um, and they were found out. So they went to the concentration camps. And uh, so her sister died in the concentration camp. Her dad died in the concentration camp. I think both her uncles died in the concentration camp. She experienced some really dark places. But I want you to see this quote up here. I've experienced his presence in the deepest, darkest hell that man can create. I have tested the promises of the Bible. And believe me, you can count on them. It doesn't matter what we go through in life, the circumstance of life. If we can stay in his presence, we will carry peace. 
This world is looking for somebody who's carrying peace in stormy times. And if we can, like, anchor into the kingdom, shot our feet with the gospel of, of peace, we're going to see salvations, a lot of them this year. I believe with all my heart. This shaking is not just ca- causing challenges in the church for people. Everywhere people are being shaken. And that means the gospel of peace is going to be what you carry. But you've got to carry peace to carry the gospel of peace. Do you hear what I'm saying? I was reminded, too, of uh, Nebuchadnezzar or the story of uh, Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I, for some reason, that story keeps cropping up here and there. And I think it's because the Lord is preparing us to be like them. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. People who are not intimidated by the other voices. Nebuchadnezzar, the most powerful person on the earth, right? You guys know. Says to, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, why aren't you worshiping at the, the statue that I built of myself? You know if you don't worship, if you don't kneel before my statue, you're going to the fiery furnace, right? You guys know the story. What Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this is what they said. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. The Lord is positioning the church to be unintimidated by the voices of culture. He's positioning you to not be intimidated and to be people of courage and people of purpose and people who are fixed on magnifying Christ. This is what he's doing in us right now. I hear, I hear the, the Lord, the Master, saying um, right now, like he's burning. You're in this refining process. as He's burning away earthly ambitions that don't line up with heaven. And fear has to be dealt with. Anxiety has to be dealt with. I, one of my daughters who's in the education system um, as a teacher was just talking about the challenges, you know, of what could be coming down the pike in the, in the, in the education system. She's a teacher, and, uh, and it's a real thing. I mean, if this administration gets their way right now, it's, in, it's supposed to be in government places, there is no gender. That there's no women, there's no men, there's no father, there's no mother. You can't use those kind of words. There's no brother, no sister. And they're redetermining the vocabulary according to their value system, which is anti-biblical value system. How many of you know God created man and woman? In his image, he created them male and female. How many of you know that he's a father? I mean, this is, this is anti-Christ, anti-biblical agenda. And it's, it's at our front door. How are we going to handle it? I'm, I'm telling you how we're going to handle it. We're not going to bow down to it. Does that mean it'll bring persecution? Possible. But he's, he's causing us to have the courage of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Our God will deliver us. We're going to follow him. We're going to obey him. And we're not going to be afraid of man. Somebody said, no fear of man. We have the shalom of God. Yeah. The third characteristic of the kingdom is joy. Anybody need more joy in the room? A lot more of you need it than that. I can tell. Just look at your faces. <laughs> Biblical definition of joy. Joy is a good feeling in the soul produced by the Holy Spirit, not circumstances. Produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the word and in the world. If you need more joy... Here, get more in this. Get more in this even if you don't need more joy. I, I don't know if you know that, like, our, Brenda and I experienced a happy place at the ocean. And, uh, but but we're, our happiness is based on circumstances. So circumstances were good, but the joy came from knowing that our creator is the one that created those waves. And we were able to magnify him and worship him and receive the revelation of his goodness from creation. And so joy comes from recognizing the goodness of God in all of life. 
and we need to have the fruit of joy. In his presence is fullness of in his presence is fullness of joy. Yeah. So this week, um, I think it was Friday, um, I had read some news, news, news is not always very happy these days, and I was reading some news and looking at the first 17 administrative executive orders, and then also read what his plans was for increasing financial support for abortions across the planet, and, and my heart was grieved. Now, how many of you know it's okay to grieve? It's okay to mourn. I'm not saying that's out of bounds. I'm just saying underneath that, joy needs to remain. But my heart was grieving, and I was a hard time finding joy, and we're in the car and pick up, and Brenda and I talk a little bit about it, and I said, man, I, I think I've lost my joy. And she said, well, what are you going to do about that? I said, I think I'm going to sing. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. She says, Where? <laughs> I said, down in my heart, you know, and, uh, and, and that just kind of lined me back up with the presence of the Lord, you know, and then, I don't know if you know this song, I, I didn't grow up singing these kind of songs, but I learned Brenda teaching me as we sang to our kids, but if the devil doesn't like it, what? He can sit on a tack. I said, I want something more violent than that. She said, it's a children's song. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. It's a children's song. The joy of the Lord is our strength. If we don't have the joy, we got troubles. We need the kingdom. We need to be have the joy of the Lord. We need to have the joy of the Lord. And I have a whole bunch of scriptures on the joy, but one thing Steve, John, Steve Brackman, Backlund has said, it's often not convenient to have joy because somebody is causing you not have joy or your finances are causing you not have joy or somebody that you love is not following the Lord and you lose your joy or you, the wrong president got elected and you lost your joy. I mean, there's always an excuse not to be joyful. Not really. To be truthful, the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. The presence of the Lord. So pursuing the presence of the Lord in all circumstances restores the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. I'm going to have to ask the worship team to come up here right now. I've got a couple more scriptures I want to read over you, but why don't you guys come on up. And why don't you guys stand? <clears throat> I want us to... Uh, to read John 15 uh, together, verses 9 and 11. I want you to read out loud with me, if you could, as they're getting ready. Can you do that with me? Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. These things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. Abide in the Father's love. Jude says, keep yourself in the love of God. Keep yourself in the love of God. Um, I come in agreement, Lord, with this group of people that we are aligning our hearts and our minds and our spirit into the spirit realm and the victory and the, and the place of the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom, the scripture says, and all the other things will take care of themselves. So, Lord, we line our hearts up with the King of kings and his dominion, his rule over our lives. We want Jesus to be magnified. I want to read the scripture over us. Would you put your hand on your hearts? I'm just going to let receive the love of the Father as I, as I read the scripture out of Romans chapter 8. And I prophesy over this over every person in this room and those online as well. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate me from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death. Life's troubles, fallen angels, dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in my present or future circumstance that can weaken his love. 
There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance me from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. Holy Spirit, in this room right now, I come to agreement with the spirit of adoption to hover over every heart in a fresh way for the Father's love to speak over their hearts. You are my child. You do not have to be afraid. I've got purposes for you to overcome in the coming days. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to use you. You're going to be a mouthpiece and expression of my righteousness. The shalom of God will cover you. You're going forward and you're going back. There will be no place I will not be with you. The joy of the Lord is going to be coming upon you more and more and more. You're going to experience my joy in you more and more and more. And you will become a strong follower of Jesus Christ. And many will be attracted to the glory of God because of you and your life. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and worship with this song. Reaches to the heavens. Yeah. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Only your righteousness is like a mighty mountain. Father, today as a family, a church family, we want to say we trust you. Our trust is in you. Our trust is in you and you alone. You are faithful, you are righteous, you are just, and you are loving towards us. Thank you, Father, that we can trust you and walk with you in this season and the seasons to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey.
love on one another. If you need prayer, uh, come on up. Otherwise, make sure everybody around you knows they're amazing.